So if you've spent any time ice fishing, you know that if you're not geared up right, it can really suck. And specifically, um, as far as like traveling around the lake and having all your gear ready, for me, the best platform is a snowmobile. Unless you know, you've got a bunch of money and you can track out a fancy pickup truck or you get a side-by-side -side or something like that. Snowmobiles are super reliable and they can get you just about anywhere. And in this video, I'm gonna run through my sled right here, how I rigged it up so that it's not a big pain in the butt to bring a bunch of gear out on the ice. I can get just about anywhere I want. And I've also got my buddy Brad. He's gonna share a few of his modifications on his sled. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so step number one, if you're trying to build the ultimate ice fishing snowmobile is you need a really good platform. And my platform is the Yamaha VK540. Uh, and the reason why this is good is because it's a big utility sled that can carry a bunch of weight. It's got a big wide track. Um, so this is just what I could find a good deal on. But aside from that, like you could get skidoos like the Expedition and the Scandic. Uh, Articat has their Bearcat. Uh, Polaris has a few different options. The Titan is kind of like the creme de la creme on the Polaris side. But I have the VK540. So what makes this sled so great, it's got a few things. It has nice wide skis. I actually got scratchers right there on the skis as well. Um, it also has a ton of suspension and maybe more than more importantly than just about anything it's got a really wide track it's like a 20 inch track with super tall paddles uh, the only thing i haven't done to this thing yet which i figured out this past winter i really need to do is i need to get some studs on there because there's just some of those in between times when you need studs i've actually ran three people on this seat right here and i've had you know i've daisy chained like three four otter sleds behind it just kind of pulled in conjunction so it's a really beefy sled with a lot of power and now let's get into the mods because I know that's what you guys are all here to actually watch in this video. So let's start from the front right here. We have, first things first, we have the digger auger holder. And the reason why I like this is because everything is just on here, super solid. It's not going anywhere. It clamps right to the bumper here. So as long as your snowmobile isn't one of those snowmobiles that's seen a few things and it's got a broken bumper and all that, like, it's ideal, in my opinion, to have the auger in front of you because then you can see if anything does happen to go wrong, maybe you forgot to latch it down. And that's also why I like the diggers specifically is because they have an all metal mechanism. So I just pull this up here I can take the auger off. It doesn't take me more than a second to just put it right back on. And in addition to that, I have these little Colpin straps which I've kind of found are really nice. They're super cheap. And so I've got them in a couple places on this setup, but basically I have like a spud bar set up right here. This is a two piece spud bar. And like when it's early ice, spud bars are super important, but in the middle of winter, like if you're going over an ice heave and you just want to check the conditions before you launch your snowmobile over it, uh, it's nice to go in, poke around, just see the conditions of everything. And also like stuff just gets frozen into the ice. Sometimes it's houses, whatever it is. And the last thing up here in the front is this light bar. So the light bar is really nice. Basically for when you're driving around at night, it basically makes it so your headlights go from like this range out to this range, which is really nice when you're traveling over the lake and you're trying not to, you know, drive into big giant cracks and stuff like that. So that's a quick run through on the front of the snowmobile. So now let's move from the front to kind of the middle, the command center. Well, first of all, I have like this polycarbonate platform that I put here so I can have more room to mount things around. And basically like I took cardboard and kind of like cut it and tried to figure out exactly what size this was. And then I took this polycarbonate, which I basically just ordered off of Amazon and cut the perfect size and then took stainless steel bolts to connect it right here. Um, so this thing is like super solid. I wouldn't want to like, you know, hang from it or anything, but it should be should be pretty good there. There is some metal up on the top of here that I was able to bolt into. So basically left to right, I got a cup holder right here. Great for, well, cups and stuff, but sometimes I throw lures and whatnot in there. Um, and then I also have the Ram phone holder. So I've gone through a couple phone holders looking through here. I actually had one. I won't, I don't want to throw like any companies under the bus or anything, but I had one on here and like, when we were driving, you know, 70 miles an hour down the road, like it actually flew off. Um, and I also like had my phone fall 
out of one of the uh, phone holders as well. And so I did a bunch of research and like this Ram mount is just stupidly nice. Like you just squeeze it right here. And if you wanna go back in, squeeze it, pop it on there like, just like that. And like this thing is super solid, not going anywhere. Um, and then aside from that, I have a unit right here for mapping. This is the Helix 7. And then I have a little rod holder deal, just kind of bolted on there. And then I also like slipped on one of those little cold snap things. So if I'm just like sitting here fishing off my snowmobile, I can pop that in there, unhook it. It's retractable. Um, I don't have any rods handy, but I like to have the rod holder right here just cause like if I'm hole hopping, uh, it's nice to have your rod there. You don't have to worry about like putting it somewhere behind you where you can't see what's going on and the bait fell off. And next thing you know, you have 300 feet of line behind you. I like to have everything right here because I can see it. And then also because it's kind of protected behind the windshield, uh, things tend to not go wrong quite as often. And then aside from that, I have this little flashlight thing right here on the puck. And what's nice about this is when I'm fishing at night, I have this mounted right here and I click the button and it lights up this whole area. And then when I'm like really in a pinch and I need a flashlight, I can take it off and like look around. So aside from that up here, I have the button for my LED light bar right there. I have extra pins just kind of hanging all over the place. I got one right here. And right here basically I have like a little holster where I've got my pliers handy. Then I've also got scissors just so I'm ready to go. I actually do a lot of fishing sitting where I'm sitting right here and I actually set my uh, flasher unit right here. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I do a ton of fishing right here. So it's just really nice to have these tools. I can look at the map. I can set my phone here, maybe play some music or something while I'm jigging. Um, and I also have this saddle bag right here that truth be told, like I haven't found like a ton of useful, uh, applications for this because these are not waterproof cases or, or waterproof pouches or anything like that. Um, but right now, basically what I'm using the saddle bag for is like, I've got like a ton of a ton of pins and stuff in here. So whenever I'm out with buddies, it seems like buddies are always losing pins. So I'm always like, don't worry, man. I got all the pins you guys could possibly need. So that's kind of the setup right here. There's a lot going on. I got reverse right here. Uh, I like that the mirrors are kind of hidden behind the windshield. It's a nice tall windshield. It like is really, really good at blocking wind. So I'm super happy with this whole system and setup. Um, you know, maybe I'll add a couple things in the future, but for now, this is what I'm rolling with. So as we uh, kind of stay sitting right here, a um, couple other things we got is I have, these are also Colpin mounts, and these are kind of like clamper mounts, which you just press one button and these open up. And so this is where I like to keep my live sonar pole. And so if I'm fishing from the, if I'm fishing from the snowmobile like this, like I'll just have a hole right here. I'll pop this in right there. And then I'll take my flasher or my sonar unit and just turn this like this. And I've got my screen right here and I can, I can just sit here and jig and have my screen there. It's, it's a really nice system. And then like when I'm ready to move, I'll just spin this around, pop this in here, clamp it down and we're ready to go. So that's why I like this system, but I'm actually gonna move this for one second here so you can sneak a peek around here. I have a little bag right here. And this is basically just like a little waterproof Yeti bag that I have basically like strapped to the side of the monster box. And I've got a bunch of stuff in here. Usually like when it like gets to be low light, cloudy, I'll throw my sunglasses in here and uh, got a bunch of extra stuff in here, basically like different pins. I got chapstick in here. I've got uh, forceps. I've got lighters in here. I've got, well, obviously extra cords and stuff. I could dig through this thing for a while. So this little waterproof Yeti pouch in the back has been just a really nice catch all for me for things that obviously I don't want to get wet. Um, but moving around to the back side here, Basically what I got going on is if you pull this off and then you pull this one off, 
you can see on the side of this monster box right here that basically this is designed to hold one bucket holder. And I'm not sure how much Otter loves me saying this, but one thing that I like to do, well here, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to just be one on there. And that's awesome, awesome extra space. But what I like to do is I like to actually put two of these bucket holder mounts on here. So instead of having, instead of having uh, both of these slots filled up to hold the bucket holders on the side here, I just have it so one's on there, but I've found that it holds pretty darn good as long as you don't load it up too heavy and as long as you're using pins on here. Uh, it's typically not going to go any anywhere, but these bucket holders are like my absolute favorite thing because not only are they great for holding buckets, they can hold a bunch of stuff. It's just like a nice big storage space, but it's really nice for flasher units. Like these things fit right in here super snug super easy and if i was going to make like a big long run across like lake of the woods or lake winnipeg i'd probably throw it in the back here but when i'm just hole hopping i think it's really awesome right here and i think if you, when you pair that up with these colpin mounts and i don't work with colpin or anything but i've just been kind of doing a bunch of digging trying to find the best stuff um it's a really efficient system for hole hopping. So that's why I'm rigged up the way I am right here. Specifically with this bucket, I have like a food safe screw on top. And what's cool about this is it stays on there real tight and I don't have stuff falling out of the top of the bucket. And this bucket for me, like every time I go fishing anywhere, I bring this bucket along. It's got all kinds of stuff in here. I got my headlamp, rod holders, rags, extra batteries, stuff like that. And for me to have, it's like almost like, it's like almost like, I got actually way too much stuff in there right now, but it's almost like my junk drawer uh, for ice fishing. So always have my bucket with me. And then kind of to wrap this whole thing up, because I know this video is probably already getting pretty long. Uh, the monster box is like the center of my entire build. And when I picked a snowmobile, I said like, I need something that's gonna be really strong really heavy duty something that can carry a big box and a bunch of people and a bunch of gear and that's why i picked the snowmobile but for me like if i'm going to build out a snowmobile for ice fishing you can go lean and mean but i want something that i can put the monster box on because that basically give that basically makes it so the sky is the limit as far as what you could do so what's cool about it is it's roto molded you can screw stuff in there you can put bolts in there and uh, it's just super, super tough and durable. Um, and my buddy Brad Hawthorne and I took the snowmobile over to his house and he's like, let's make sure things get, you know, let's super dial things in. And he helped me rewire my electric and he also helped me put this monster box on here. And I've seen like anybody who has these and posts videos, there's always people asking in the comments section like, hey, how did you mount that monster box on there? And if you wanna know what I did, it's pretty crazy. And basically what we did is like we mutilated a $500 like little basket that's supposed to be on the back of the snowmobile. And so basically, I, I might have some B-roll. If I do, I'll drop it right here. But basically we shaved that off. We shaved it flat. And instead of taking it off, because it was, it was, if we took it off, we'd have to take the hitch off. So anyway, we shaved it flat and we set the monster box on top and then used U-bolts to kind of clamp it on to basically the bottom layer of that metal basket. Um, so anyway, I guess that was sort of like a long aside, but what's really nice about the box is there's just a ton of room on the inside here and I can fit a ton of stuff, but like with all this ex all these extra storage things that I do, I don't even usually end up filling it up to be completely honest, but I come with a lot of baggage. Like I have extra camera gear, I got extra batteries, I kind of like to eat a lot of food while I'm on the ice. So, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm not well fed, I get kind of hangry. So anyway, that's uh, that's why this is nice because there's a ton of space in here for all my extra crap. And then Brad also helped me because we got rid of that whole basket where everything, where everything was essentially, including like the whole light setup. And legally you're supposed to have lights on the back of these things. So Brad helped me kind of like remount the light on the back of the monster box here. Uh, in addition, I have a couple extra culp and snaps here. I usually actually have a big shovel across the back. 
Um, but another thing I got too is like, I got some bungee cords on the back here. So I can set random stuff on here and then throw the bungee over the top just to kind of uh, keep it in place. So there's a lot of extra storage up there. Sometimes I'll throw flashers and put the bungee over the top of them. And then just kind of moving around. This is kind of the last thing. I have a big giant rod case on the back. And this is also from Otter. Everything kind of like works together obviously because the main thing is the big monster box in the middle. And uh, this is the 48 deep. So like basically 48 inches long and then deep. And so I can put like my big boy rods in here. I can carry a bunch of rods and that's nice because it's just nice to have them all in one place. And it's kind of on the same exact mounting system that's on the other side where I can kind of slip that in and out. So that's kind of the rundown. Um, I guess, actually we gotta sneak around to this side really quick cause there's one thing I forgot. I also have storage underneath the seat with this particular snowmobile. This isn't a modification or anything, but basically underneath here, I've got my extra belt. I've got a little, tool kit, I've got straps, I've got tow hitches, I've got uh, zip ties and stuff like that. So that's kind of like a quick run through of my snowmobile. And honestly, this is just like my first year. So my first year with this sled specifically. So I'm sure I'll probably do some more stuff next year. And when I do, I will update you here on the channel. Basically, I'm gonna start with what I started with, okay? I wanted a four-stroke machine. The 660 motor is well-proven in Japan. It's one of the most reliable motors. Guys are putting 20, 30,000 miles on those motors. So I went with that. It's reliable. It starts. It's just a phenomenal motor. This sled here is not a utility machine, okay? What you'll see the most common sleds guys use for ice fishing machines are touring machines and then they use utility machines. This is a high-end or was a high-end touring machine. So this was a two-up machine that instead of having the second seat on, I have my monster box on there. And it's got all those nice options like heated seats, taller windshield. It's really made to cruise. And the most important part about that is the adjustable rear suspension. I can really key this back suspension up to haul two guys plus two or three sleds behind it. And it's got that grunty low-end four-stroke to get everything moving. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump on to all the little things that make these ice machines cool. So start here with, well, this idea. A lot of these ideas are just, you get them from buddies. Buddy of mine, Nick Linder, got a sled and he had this bag system here. And I'm like, instant, that's getting copied and grabbed it for, I think 17 bucks on Amazon. It was a great addition. It literally went on in two, two minutes. The other one is the Ram cell phone holder. I went through like 30 mounts. I'm kidding, but like a hundred dollars worth of mounts before I was, me and Nick were going somewhere. I don't remember where it was. And he's like, oh, you got to try the Ram mount one. I'm like, is it the deal? And he's like, it's the deal. I've been using it for a couple months. It's awesome. So I tried it. Nick was right. It is the best, best mount. Don't go waste your money like I did. Get the Ram one. There's two different sizes. If you have an iPhone 13 or bigger, you're gonna want the larger size cell phone holder, not the standard size one, but that one will work. Cause that's one Nick has. I got the bigger one cause he said, hey, get the next size up. So cell phone holder, really nice for that One Boat Network app. So your GPS is right in your face, super nice. Um, got your bag for your pins, your safety gear. Now on to, the monster box. I'm the gadget guy, cut everything up to make it fit type of guy. So we're gonna start here. This is the Otter five gallon bucket holder that I have basically cut the face off of it. So when I'm running around, mega live in the heck out of everything, trying to find the fish for my customers, I can literally drill a hole right here, take my mega live pole, drop down, look around. And if there's fish there, drill the area accordingly and move on. The moving A to B in my line of work is what basically makes or break the day. You have to be able to move quickly and efficiently and instead of taking everything out and putting it back in. So this right here, I can jump off, drill a hole. Fish, yes, cool, drill it out, no, move on. So 
Then on to my Mega Live pole holder. These are stage clamps for lights. If you look at these, these are metal. They flop on, twist, and then basically you roll them in. The other neat part is if you're looking for a uh, cable holder, you can slide your cable underneath those and that'll hold that for longer trips for when it's on a trailer. These again, you can get them on Amazon. They're not that expensive, but they are in that like $12, $15 price range. This will not come off. This is why I like this. You have a little bit of money wrapped up into your deucer and your pole, better keep it safe. And it comes on and off there in a breeze. So now to the inside. The inside is basically where we have all our stuff that we want to keep out. We got hats, I got extra batteries, bunch of Northland spoons in there. Ooh, yep, that's delicious. That's not, mom didn't send that with me. Those are maggots right there. And just everything you want that you can imagine goes in there. Spare units, tools, tow ropes, bait, anything you need goes in there. So there's, oh, best part, these are really cheap on Amazon. See that little LED light right there? Those come pre, pre stickied. They have a little patch of 3M tape on the back. Rip it off, stick it in there, put two batteries in it or three batteries in it, and you have yourself a light. Those will last you all season. Cheap, simple, effective. Okay, now around to this side. This is my dual milk crate setup. And I basically took the adapter off of the ice rod and made it so this just basically locks this on. So that right there is, if I'm fishing in portables, if it's gonna be cold, I have everything I need right on this. So when I set up my portable, I can grab this whole container, bang right in the portable in one flail swoop. Now, if I'm guiding, I can have my units in here and just hand them out left and right or bait containers or five gallon buckets or whatever. So as you can see, your monster box is kind of your Swiss army knife. Don't be afraid to drill into it. Don't be afraid to put bolts into it. These things, literally, you can make them and design them and finish them however best suits your needs for ice fishing. So I hope you took some of the ideas off of Nick's sled, some of the ideas off of my sled, and put them together to make your own. And let's see them, man. I'm always getting great ideas from everyone, so let's see your ideas. <laughs> put them down in the comments section.